Hi everyone, Stepan here. Welcome to the introduction to the Vienna game. So we're looking at e4, e5, and instead of playing knight f3 and going into all the heavily theoretical Spanish, Italian, Russian lines, we go knight c3. This is the Vienna game, and this is the start of something extremely sharp and extremely interesting. You play this, you play knight c3, and you delay the development of your kingside knight in order to be able to play f4 in most cases, although you don't have to. So it's an attacking opening, it's a sharp opening, you're planning to put pressure on black very early on. Black has a couple of options of how to respond to this. Most commonly they go either knight f6 or knight c6. Knight f6 is going to lead to our main lines, the Vienna Gambit, the Mises variation and the Stanley variation, and knight c6 is the so-called Max Lange defense, which is black's attempt to sharpen things up uh, on their end and sort of copy white and aim to go f5 in many lines. Let's start with knight f6. Now, we have to look at a couple of ideas. The first one is the Vienna Gambit, the second one is g3, and the third one is bishop c4. Now, bishop c4 is going to be fairly similar to the bishop's opening. g3 is going to be more positional in nature, and the Vienna Gambit is going to be the sharpest of them all, and probably the reason why you play the, the Vienna game in the first place. Now, in this introductory video, I'm going to show you the basics of each uh, variation, of each uh, opening move and the ideas behind it. I'm going to show you some traps, some tricks, some attacking lines, and some things both sides have to look out for. And then in four separate videos, I'm going to cover the four variations you can see on the screen in detail. So this video is going to be mostly about concepts. The following four videos are going to be looking into great depth. So let's start with f4, the Vienna Gambit. Now, the first thing we have to answer is what happens if black accepts the Gambit. Now, this is fairly similar to the King's Gambit, but there's a knight on f6. So most ideas with queen h4 aren't really dangerous. So an improved King's Gambit, therefore the pawn cannot be taken. If the pawn is taken, you can sign the score sheets and say, okay, 1-0, I win. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Why? We continue e5. The knight has zero squares. It has to go back. Once the knight goes back, it's obvious that we've won a bunch of time. We have more space and we're going to go d4 and recapture the f4 pawn anyway. So a great win for us. One thing that should be noted is that queen e7 doesn't work trying to pin the pawn because we can just unpin and then the knight has to go back anyway. You have to be careful about queen h4 checks in most cases. So whenever the knight drops back, you go knight f3, and then you continue with d4, save your pawn, recapture the pawn on f4, and so on. But if they go knight g8 straight away, again, knight f3. This is the first thing we do. We cover the h4 square to make sure that the queen doesn't have a check. Then we can continue with, the, with either d4 or queen e2 and start punishing black for their ignorance. Now, black's best move is d6, trying to challenge our center. We can continue either queen e2 or d4, as I said. I like d4, and when they take d5, we just go queen e2. And we're protecting the pawn. f6, obviously, will lead to complete destruction. Something like bishop e7 or bishop b4 trying to pin our knight. We just take queen e5 check, and after queen e7, we play bishop takes f4. And you can see that we've regained our material. We've actually managed to trade the f-pawn for a central pawn. We're going to castle queen side, hugely in development, more space, excellent position, and perfect game for us. After e f4 uh, and e5, we can conclude that white is basically winning in all lines. Now, one more thing we should mention is that trying to defend this pawn as black is also bad. Uh, for example, if black goes knight c6, trying to defend the pawn, we win straight away. We just take, and then we advance with d4, the knight has to drop back to g6, then we advance with e5, this one still has no squares, so knight g8. And now again, we cover the checking square, knight f3, and after d6, we go for checkmate. We don't care about black taking. Black can take once, twice, three times, if they do, they're busted, so like bishop c4 d5, we castle, e d4, knight g5, game over. If the knight is taken, bishop f7 is made in a couple of moves, or you just take the queen on d8. So if they're going to be defending that pawn, maybe d6 is playable, but still. You cover the, the checking square, 
You develop the knight, you put pressure on e5. If knight bd7, for example, then just bishop c4. And we have an excellent game. We're going to go d3, castles, king side. Uh, all of our pieces are perfect. Still should be better for white. This is for black, this is just a bad feeling. So, what we are going to be looking at is the main move, the sensible move, the way black actually should be playing this the move d5. Now, before we get into the theory, uh, in the Vienna Gambit, and before I show you these ideas, I would like to show I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Chessbook. Chessbook is an excellent tool to help you learn, build, and learn your repertoire. So what you do with Chessbook is you import your repertoire either by hand, by going, let's say, white, and start building your repertoire, or and actually importing it by hand, or you can just import a PGN. So I'm gonna do that now for the Vienna game. So I import from a PGN file. Let's upload my study. This is just the PGN of the entire study I created to, to record this video. I submit. I don't want to tri trim my repertoire. No thanks. I'll keep the whole thing. And now it recognizes the Vienna game as my repertoire. So what I can do now is I can practice those moves. It's as simple as that. It took me a minute to import this repertoire. If you want the study and if you want to learn the Vienna, you can find the link to the study in the description below. And it also recognizes the mistakes I'd made in my online games because I've connected my training account, account on Leeches and it says I made one mistake. So what, what you can do is you can review your online games based on your new repertoire. So let's see what it had found. Okay, I know what it had found. I'm supposed to play knight c3 because it's the Vienna in the actual game I'd played knight f3. So not a good example of a mistake. But the better part of this is, and what's important for me as a tournament player, is that once you import your repertoire, you can practice those moves. So this is the best thing. And it focuses on the biggest gaps in your knowledge. So let's say practice moves, everything that's due for review. And let's start. I go e4. I go knight c3. I play the Vienna. I can go f4. And it's going to quiz me on all of the options in my repertoire. Since this study was on f4 and g3 and bishop c4, I'm going to play all three moves. Okay, let's continue. f4 takes. Okay, this is just a bad move. It's showing you the mistake I've shown you in the video. So we go e5 and now we go d4 or knight f3. Okay, both are fine. We can now go queen e2 or d4. Let's say let's say queen e2 and you continue like that okay d4 is also an option and it's going to question you on your repertoire until you practice it well now obviously i've only imported the vienna for white uh, i can import several different things it's going to question me and quiz me on all of those things and for black i've only imported the karakan partially but long story short, I'm going to be using Chessbook. I find it extremely useful. If you want to use it too, there's a link in the description below. The basic uh, features you get are only importing a couple of hundred moves. But if you want to get the premium membership, you get unlimited moves. It's about $5 a month, so not a lot uh, to be able to practice your repertoire very comfortably without a hassle and without having to use five different platforms to do it. Thank you to Chessbook once again. Uh, let's go back. Okay, uh, back to the video. Uh, black plays d5, we take on e5. That's why we played f4. They take on e4 and now we have a couple of choices. Now, <clears throat> in my opinion, the Vienna Gambit should be played like a Gambit. It should be played aggressively. So I'm going to be recommending the move queen f3, uh, although knight f3 is the, is the main option. If you can hear uh, bumping and stuff, it's because it's snowing very heavily and snow is falling off the roof onto the little whatever it is on my window. So excuse that. Now, instead of knight f3 or queen f3, there's another move, d3. And d3 is the so-called modern variation. And it's... I want to say not good for white. If black knows what they're doing, they're going to be better, almost minus one. But if black gets tempted and plays this move queen h4, then we are great. So d3 is basically a trap with which you can trap low rated players. If they do go queen h4, we go g3. And it seems like we're losing the rook because of knight g3. Of course, if we take, they take the rook. But now we go knight f3, attacking the queen. The queen drops back to h5. 
Uh, and once the queen drops back to drops back to h5, we take the pawn on d5. And now, if they take our rook, we take their rook, and the position should be about equal, but I think easier to play for black. And if they try to defend, then they lose. If they try to defend the pawn on c7, then we just go knight f4, and that's it. The queen has one more square, queen h6, and now after knight e2, there are zero squares. The queen is attacked, the knight is attacked, and we just win. So after d3, if they do play queen h4, we're fine. But the problem is this line, knight c3, b c3, and d4. And this leads to more than equality for black. So in the detailed video, I am going to be covering d3 in great depth and try to show you lines that are playable after this. But for now, I, I don't think it's the best option. The main move is knight f3. We got rid of the pawn, the f file is open, and there are many, many things black can do here. Black can play bishop e7, bishop c5, bishop b4, bishop e6, bishop g4, even bishop f5 is, is playable. There are many, many options. So we are going to be spending a ton of time on this in the detailed video because this is the actually theory-heavy, sensible way to play for both sides. But for, for example, after bishop e7, white goes queen e2, the knight takes, you take with the d-pawn, your plan is obviously to castle queenside. So after something like c5, bishop f4, knight c6, castles queenside, it's still a nice attacking game. It's still perfectly playable. We have this isolated pawn on e5, which breaks black's position in half, gives us some space. And of course, if black is ever to castle kingside, then our pawns just keep keep advancing. So knight f3 is interesting. But I think if you're going to play the Vienna Gambit, you should go for queen f3. And your idea is to get pressure down the f-file. It's as simple as that, and to try and castle quickly. Now, black has several options. There is f5, which is very interesting, the Bar de Leben variation, which is the most counter-attacking way to play. There's knight c6, which is sensible, but the main move is knight takes knight. And after knight takes knight, you can take with the d-pawn, you can take with the b-pawn. If you take with the b-pawn, you're building your center and you want to go d4 later on, so this strengthens your center. If you take with the d-pawn, your plan is to castle queenside very quickly, so we want to be developing this bishop. Now, of course, one line that I'm going to be covering in detail in, in the video, uh, I should mention here, if you do take with the d-pawn, then this is just queen h4, after g3, queen e4 check leads to a queen trade. And this is heavily theoretical. I believe that <clears throat> many players, many lower rated, rated players will not know this. I think it's comfortable for white, but it's not the game you're trying to play. So this is something I would be afraid of with the Vienna over the board. And if bc3, if we turn on the engine now and play queen h4, after g3, queen e4 is basically the same idea but we have a much stronger center. So this should be better for white than the other variation, simply because if we regain this pawn, if we take this pawn, and we probably are, uh, we can play d4 and have great central control. So I don't think queen h4 check is a good idea after bc3. So on queen f3, this should be the main move and you have to decide which way to take. So that's the Vienna Gambit. Now, the other variations I would like to go over uh, are the alternatives to that. So if we go e4 and they go e5, we go knight c3, they go knight f6, we don't have to uh, play f4, we can play g3. This is the Mises variation and I think this is the positional way to play. Black has many many options, bishop c5, knight c6, even bishop e7 is playable, d6 isn't that good. Bishop b4 is possible, c6 is possible trying to play d5, but the main idea is d5 straight away, punishing white for not doing anything very concrete. e d5, knight d5, bishop g2, and you can see that this is a normal game. Knight c3, b c3, white is going to aim to go d4 at some point, white is going to have pressure down the b file, but black's position is fine. This bishop is very strong, White has a slight structural disadvantage because of bc3, but after d4, white's going to have a strong center. So when I uh, do the video on the Mises variation, that's going to be my recommendation for people who like to play positionally, but like to avoid a ton of theory. So if you don't want to go into a Spanish, but want something sound with less theory, you do this. 
Okay, uh, the next thing I would like to show you is bishop c4, which is the so-called Stanley variation. And that's going to resemble <coughs> the bishop's opening. So in the bishop's opening, you start bishop c4, and you may get some pressure on f7 early on. But the idea is still to avoid uh, playing knight f3 in most cases. So this knight is going to end up on e2 more often than not. Uh, black has a couple of choices. Black can continue developing with knight c6. And I should mention that we ever, at that point, play knight f3, we are transposing to the four knights and, and so on. Very boring theoretical lines. So we don't go knight f3, we go knight e2. But black doesn't have to go knight c6. Black can play uh, knight e4, for example. And now we continue queen h5, putting pressure on f7. That's the idea behind uh, bishop to c4. They go knight d6 defending, we go bishop b3, or we can take on e5 with check. And it should be a fairly symmetrical position after something like this. Where we have this bishop, and it's fine. And this knight is awkward, and this bishop will have a hard time developing. But it's nothing major. I don't think bishop c4 leads to anything very exciting for white. Alternatively, white black doesn't have to take on e4. Black can, as I say, play bishop c5 or bishop to b4. For example, if bishop c5, then d3, d6, knight a4, chasing this bishop away. If we get something like this, we are going to go knight e2, we're going to castle, we're going to play f4. And similar to the bishop's opening, we have some nice attacking ideas, which can happen very quickly compared to normal Spanish or especially Italian lines, where we do the same thing but have a knight on f3. So the mobility of our f-pawn is the key idea here. Okay, now the next thing I would like to show you is playing knight c6 instead of knight f6 for black. So if they don't go uh, knight f6, if they go knight c6, this means that their f-pawn can move, they have different ideas like knight g7, and their position is flexible. This is symmetry, and of course, just a tempo down for black, so white has the first move. And there are, again, a couple of options. You can go bishop c4, you can go g3, or you can go f4. So you have basically the same choices, uh, but with the knight on c6. If you go bishop c4, black is most likely going to continue knight f6 at some point, so this is going to transpose to the Stanley variation. Although they don't have to, they can continue bishop c5 and keep copying you. If you play g3, this is of course going to resemble uh, the Mises variation. And again, if they play knight f6, it's going to transpose. But again, they don't have to. They can play something like bishop c5. We go bishop g2, d6, knight g2. And now black strikes at the center with f5. And you can see why black would like to play the Max Lange defense. It's just a sharp way to combat a sharp opening. So you're fighting fire with fire, basically. But my recommendation, if you're going to play the Vienna, is to meet knight f6 and knight c6 the same way with the Vienna gambit. This is the Vienna gambit within the Max Lange defense. We're going to cover it within the Max Lange. Of course, if at any point knight f6 is played uh, under sound circumstances, uh, we are going to transpose. But in this case, since there is a knight on c6 and no knight on f6, black can actually take ef4 and black accepts the gambit. Of course, e5 now firstly loses a pawn, secondly doesn't gain a tempo on anything. So playing the Max Lange defense, I think, is a way to try and avoid uh, the Vienna gambit proper. Still, no worry. We continue the same way. There's no knight on f6, so watch out for queen h4. We always start with knight f3. You know, one of the main reasons black plays the Max Lange defense is g5. And if you've seen my videos on the King's Gambit, this should be fairly familiar. This is the King's Gambit, much, but much sounder for white. If you turn on the engine, it says minus 0 0.6. So it's not a big deal. We continue g3, they continue g4, knight h4, f3, and d4. This is a fairly, fairly typical position you're going to be getting. And I believe it's extremely comfortable for white, even though there's this pawn mass moving towards the king side. For example, d6, bishop e3, sensible development. We want to castle queen side as quickly as possible. Knight f6, queen d2, 
d5 e5 knight e4 takes takes and castles an extremely pleasant position uh, where you okay have less space in the center on the king side this is obviously fairly problematic but your king is safe you're looking forward to playing d5 at some point this bishop has fairly natural squares this knight is ready to jump into the game either via f5 or g6 at an opportune moment we can start undermining this it's pleasant it's not completely sound and black should be slightly better but it's pleasant so against knight c6 you can choose whether you want to go into a, a lesser version of the Vienna Gambit or if you want to go g3 or bishop c4 and play a more positional game. Now, as I said, I'm going to be covering the four main variations, the Vienna Gambit, the Mises, the Stanley and the Max Lange in four separate videos uh, in the next four days. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the introduction. Let me know what you think. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.